What's up guys, Joshua Rivas here from RivasFX.com. It's time for another hiking guide video, and this time we're going up into Tennessee, and we're gonna be looking at Burgess Falls. Burgess Falls is located in central Tennessee amidst a plethora of very nice waterfalls near the Cookville, Tennessee area. Burgess is located specifically inside of Burgess Falls State Park, just south of Cookville, Tennessee. Burgess Falls is located inside of a gorge, so beware of flooding problems. It can flood pretty easily. Most of the trail is pretty high up, so there hasn't been many problems along the main trail with regards to flooding. The only chance you have to worry about that is if you go down towards the main falls at the very end, which we'll get to in just a second. But as for the main trail, it's just under two miles, follows the gorge pretty well. You'll see three waterfalls in total along this trail, starting with the upper falls, then the middle falls, and then eventually the main Burgess Falls at the very end. Once you leave the parking lot, you're going to come to a sign that says three quarters of a mile approximately to the main falls and also it being a strenuous hike. I've done it twice and it's not too bad. We'll talk about the rating here a little bit later on in the video, but depending upon your discretion, it could be a little strenuous at times. There is a good bit of elevation gain, some steps, and also some routes along the way that could make it a little bit harder at times. But overall, the trail, not terrible, especially compared to other trails in the area. As you start on the trail, you're going to see at least part of the upper falls and it's a pretty nice view. You can get right along the water there. And if you continue on the trail, you're going to come up to like a pretty new bridge feature. Really nice that they've done along this trail. And you're going to come up to right along the side of the creek and you're going to see an old timey kind of bridge that crosses the creek. Obviously, you're not going to want to touch that. But nonetheless, along that little ledge, you're going to see a nice view of the upper falls before you continue on your trek towards the middle part of Burgess Falls. The path will cross about two bridges over very small creeks. When it is running and it's pretty wet, you're gonna see two kind of small waterfall-like features. That'll be to your left most of the journey, but you're gonna cross at least two bridges along the way to your journey towards the Middle Falls. As you pass the second bridge, you're gonna to start to see a little bit of that elevation gain. And by a little bit, I mean you're gonna see quite a bit of daunting stairs ahead of you that are gonna go straight up. So those are your stairs and pretty much your main elevation gain along this trail. And take your time a little bit as you climb up these stairs. Once you come down, it's a lot easier on the way back. Once you pass the steepest stairs, it gets a little bit easier, flattens out a little bit, comes down as well. You're gonna see that fence back to your right, and then you're gonna to start to see a sign that says Overlook. This is when you know you're getting really close to the Middle Falls of Burgess Falls. You're gonna follow this path, and you're gonna see Middle Falls to your right, a very nice view through the trees, especially during fall and winter months. During the summer months, I haven't been just yet, but it could be a little bit shaded. While you're up here, you're gonna see a sign that says the overlook has been closed. There has been flood damage to this trail in the past, so this has been closed off and has not yet been fixed. Once you finish up at Middle Falls, it's time to continue on the trek and finish up this trail, getting to the main view of Burgess Falls. You're gonna come to a little bit of a fork in the trail. To your right is the way down to the main falls, which we'll talk about in just a second, but just ahead of you is gonna be kind of a square bridge with a fenced around area with a beautiful view of the gorge and also the main falls that you don't have to worry about any flood problems if you stay along this main square bridge type of feature. As I stated previously, if you take it to the right along the trail at that fork at the very end of the trail, it's gonna take you down towards the main falls. And yes, I said it goes down. So keep in mind, if you're gonna go down this way, you're gonna to have to make your way back up. So it will be another climb along the way. But nevertheless, it's pretty worth it to go all the way down. There's gonna be stairs along the way. So be very careful, especially when it's muddy in some of the wetter months, but overall, not too bad, just take your time and also be curious of many other hikers in the area. As you make your way down towards the top of the falls where the creek is flowing, you're gonna see the old way of getting all the way down to the very bottom of the gorge that you would be able to see Burgess Falls from a bird's eye point of view. Like I said before, this trail has suffered uh, flood damage in the area in the past. Therefore, this old way of getting down has been shut down and has not been open since. Getting right along the edge of the creek towards the top of the falls 
is pretty breathtaking nevertheless to see the top of it. Just keep that in mind. If it's raining or if you're expecting a good rain in the day, you may want to stay away from this area and stay a little bit higher up so you don't risk any problems with potential flooding. Once you're done taking it in at the main falls, if you did go all the way back down, keep in mind, like I said before, you're going to have to climb all the way back up, which again, overall is a foul, I would say about 80 to 100 feet in terms of elevation. So it's a bit of a climb, but not too difficult. Just take your time again, climb all the way back up towards the platform. You're kind of back to where you started. Once you leave the platform, you're going to immediately see a fork in the path left and right. The sign is going to tell you to the parking lot, you can take a little bit of a gravelly road to your right and just walk the road back to the parking lot or you can stay on the trail again to your left. I would advise staying on your trail to the left. You never know what you might see on the way back that you may have missed on the way there. I always love walking the trail back and just getting it at a different vantage point. All in all, Burgess Falls, I give it a must see on my list. I definitely recommend this trail. Get out and check it out. If you have to make the drive, I still would do it. It's worth it to see this amazing waterfall. Not just one waterfall, there's three. Remember, right when you get to the parking lot, you're gonna see the upper falls, and that's when you know you're in for an amazing journey. It's just absolutely incredible to take it all in. Due to the fact that the trail is about two miles in length round trip journey, it can be a little bit tiring at times, depending upon the time of season. If it's hotter, it's a little bit easier to get more tired along this trail, but overall, it's really easy to take it all in with three waterfalls to see. If you go in the winter time like I did, you might see some icicles there. So if you're like me and you're into videography or even photography in the winter months, there is plenty to take it all in along this trail. As I said before, it's not too rocky, a few solid parts. There are those areas of incline though. With that being said, on the difficulty rating, I do give it a two and a half out of 10. And that's mainly if you decide to go down to the main falls. If you stay away from that, it's more of a two out of 10. It just depends upon how you view climbing upstairs and downstairs along this trail. So I'm gonna give it a two to two and a half out of 10, relatively easy on the scale, especially when you compare it to other trails in the area of this part of Tennessee.